Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is June 15th. It's Friday, 2018. And as always, we'll take a look back at last week's eBay auction results, see what's coming up next week and that sort of thing. But before I get started, I wanted to uh, just mention one or two things and uh, bring you up to date on some changes that have uh, happened on the eBay site as far as using it. And I'll show you a couple of quick workarounds so you can find things again. Um, I'll show you what's happened. But at any rate, uh, yesterday we posted this video. Uh, we we uh, actually had somebody ask about it and then somebody else I was on the phone with over in uh, uh, Hong Kong where we're they were talking about this and they said, you know, maybe do a video on this. So we did. This is that uh, amazing uh, uh, Chin Lung vase, uh, birthday vase that was done, um, uh, auction that was done in Paris at Sotheby's this week on the 12th. It brought $19 million and uh, I go through the video I actually include in it the uh, Sotheby's video they did a wonderful video about it um, and so forth all right Mr. Chow uh, the director the worldwide director of Chinese art uh, narrated it it's very good and uh, we also did a video for those of you that collect uh, 19th century export porcelain rose mandarin medallion canton and sort of explaining what the differences are so you don't get tangled up in the uh, in the in the names and so forth the terminology is a little bit uh, confusing at time which is which okay and uh, all that good stuff all right and now on to uh, one of the problems that has come up uh, this is eBay has changed a lot of the, a lot of the ways items are uh, 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 appearing and I, I'm not sure sure why I've talked to them about it actually and they're sort of going back now and maybe re-examining um, what they've done uh, for example if you put something on your watch list and you come across it again, um, you know, while you're looking around on the site, you won't see the little green check mark anymore next to the uh, item showing that you've already seen it, you've already put it on your watch list. Um, again, this is why I will say leave a bid, all right? Uh, it, it's confusing. Um, the other thing that they've done is this. If you get to somebody uh, like this is uh, Woolworths down in uh, um, uh, Rhode Island, and they, they had a fabulous jade that sold this week. We're going to look at that in a minute. This is their current stuff. Um, there's this very nice uh, Dwan stone they have up, uh, Dwan stone screen. Pretty rare. It's up to $500. It closes in eight hours. I suspect it'll bring twelve to 1800 somewhere in there. But at any rate, what happens is when you open... Um, a window like this, if you open this here, okay, um, and you come over here, you can look at the item, for example, you find it on, on eBay, right? But now you want to see what else they have, okay? And uh, the only option they give you now, if the user, the seller has a store, you can't see that list view, okay? I found a way to get the list view up, but what happens is you go to the store, and this is what you get, okay? There's their store. Uh, there's a couple of problems here. One, if you want to if you want to see what their completed items look like, there's no option here for completed items. So if there was something on here, something Asian, and you wanted to see what it brought, you can't click their completed items list anymore. The only way you can get to it is to go up here to their username. Okay, you see the little part right here? And you click on that, and uh, it'll bring you over here. Now it'll show you the view items for sale list or visit the store again. Click items for sale and here it is back in list form instead of in the store form and down here are your completed listings. Okay, so they're making, for some reason they made it so you have to basically go to the guy's username, click it and then view items and then go to completed listings. Okay, um, why they added all these extra clicks is beyond me. Um, but uh, that's one of the things they're doing. The other thing I wanted to mention was was that they are now replacing things that have closed. So if you're looking at the uh, weekly newsletter, for example, um, we got to take them off later on today. Um, here we have uh, the Monday through Friday listings and all this sort of thing. Okay, this 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 bowl I did not put on on on. Um, uh, on the newsletter this week, this was that item is closed already. The original item, okay, an Asian bowl with figures on sides, flowers, antique purple and blue. Clearly, that's not it. So what they're doing is they're replacing images. So you kind of want got to watch out a little bit, make sure the description um, matches the photo and so forth. Okay, uh, just just a little bit of a heads up. All right, and um, we've been talking to eBay about it, seeing if they're going to fix this, and so far. Um, they haven't come up with a good answer, okay? 
All right, now on to the uh, results for the week. Here we go. This was the, uh, I mentioned that Woolworths um, had uh, a, a, a terrific uh, jade that sold this week. We put it in the newsletter. I was kind of surprised to see it on eBay. Uh, you don't see jades like this very often. Spectacularly nice seated uh, jade uh, 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 Buddha figure, uh, very nicely carved on a very lovely uh, stand. Um, here's a, another, oh, let's see here. Here's another view of it, a side, slide, side shot. Good looking jade carving, beautifully done, uh, nicely finished, good piece of jade right there. And uh, it did very well. It brought just a, $2 under 33000 It brought $32,988, okay? And I hope the buyer paid for it. It was a nice jade. Uh, and there's actually another jade up right now, and we'll get to it at the end that's closing next week that's also not worth quite as much as this one, but it's a good one. All right. And now on over to this. This was that really cute Dao Sai uh, dish that I had mentioned last week. For some reason, their primary photo was very badly out of focus. Look at that. It's all blurry. But this is a nice little lobe-shaped uh, rim Dao Sai di dish. And uh, it, wasn't, it didn't get up to anything for a while. And then f finally it caught on and uh, it sold for $500, which is about right. It's a 19th century dish, but very nice quality. All right, beautifully decorated, really good enameling on this, okay? It was a pretty nice looking plate. And then on over to this, there was some interesting metal work up this week. This was a nice um, a Ming figure, a bronze. Uh, it had some losses to it. It originally had a, a base. If you look at the very bottom, you see that they balanced him by putting his foot on a book, which doesn't really bother me because I like the sculpture and he's got a dragon robe on and so forth. Um, Here's an, another shot of it. Good surface on it. Nice old bronze. Here's the interior um, and all that. And it went pretty reasonably, $546, okay? And uh, this was a nice-looking bronze. And as I recall, it was pretty good size. It was um, 20, about 8 inches tall. It was a nice size bronze, okay? And uh, that was a good thing. That was uh, this uh, seller over in um, uh, London that gets things once in a while that we keep an eye on. And this is uh, my my friend Freak had this up. I like metalworks, and um, um, and I and I, I don't I don't particularly care what are in fashion and out of fashion, but this was a nice um, uh, pewter uh, uh, teapot or wine pot, uh, uh, beautifully done, nice shape, sort of a, a, a very attractive shape with those faux ba bamboo handles and the little coin symbol in between the the, the pot and so forth with the foo lion on top. This is a sweet little thing. And uh, it's also, Chinese metalwork like this is, I think, is just absurdly undervalued uh, much of the time. This went for just $153, which I think was a good buy, okay? I, I, I like that stuff. Um, and this was, you know, the seller Hans 3962. He's got a good eye. He picks out interesting things. This is one of them. I like that, okay? Um, let's see. Now what else? Oh, yeah, this, the Kangxi uh, vase. This was a pretty good one. Uh, nicely done. Um, Here's a shot of the foot. Nicely, look at that that, that stepped, very crisp uh, kung shi foot that they put on things. Um, and here it is. It had a hairline in it, but it was a nice example. All right, and it brought a reasonable price. Very reasonable. It wasn't over. Um, it brought um, uh, eight hundred and twenty dollars. It wasn't perfect, but uh, it was a good-looking vase. And uh, let's see, how big was this? I forget how big it was. It was around. I think it was about nine inches tall. All right. And uh, on to this. This was, uh, there, was the, there was a fellow um, I was talking with last week that has a friend who's just starting on eBay. And he's apparently very knowledgeable and he handles a lot of unusual Noya Straits uh, stuff. I mentioned him last week. His username is Abundance, Abundance Palace. He's in uh, Malaysia, I believe. But he's got a good eye and a very good collector over there, knows him pretty well and recommended him. And this was one of the Noya Straits pink bowls he put up. This was a very, very pretty bowl. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $3,550. All right. That's a nice thing. He had a couple of others, and we're going to get to them right now. He had this up, this very nice uh, Noya Straits Jardinier. Again, beautiful colors. The color, Some Noya Straits stuff can look a little gaudy and boring. This is, this is sort of vibrant and pretty, and uh, I like the yellow on it. And it sets off nicely against the turquoise. And uh, that did very well also. It brought $3,179. All right. He also had some spoons, and one of them um, we'll get to in a second. It brought uh, about eight hundred dollars, 
All right, and this is the uh, that metalwork box that I, I mentioned last week. That that uh, Pak Tong inscribed uh, ink ink box. Okay, this was I thought this was a nice little box, and it was last week it was only up to about I think eighty or hundred dollars when we when I talked about it. Um, there it is. It's got some good. It looks like it had some good use and so forth, and uh, I liked it a lot. I like metalworks and. Uh, it brought uh, three hundred seventy-four dollars, right about on the money. That's uh, sort of what I thought it would bring, uh, but a nice, nice thing, nice little scholar's object. If you collect scholar's objects, and these are still relatively inexpensive compared to other scholar's objects. So if you if you if you like metalworks, you should consider buying some of these. And this is that Noya Strait spoon I mentioned again. Pink ground, pink ground Noya Strait tends to bring a lot of money. And this was a very nice spoon. And we see these porcelain spoons all the time. They made them in Femil Rose and blue, you know, underglazed blue and all that. But they usually don't bring this much money. $848 for one spoon, okay? He had several others that were in green and other colors and they brought a couple of hundred. But in pink, um, they bring a premium, okay? And that was one of them. And uh, I understand he's gonna be putting more stuff up, so we're gonna keep an eye on him. All right, and this was something my friend Josh Chamberlain had up, um, uh, Juice One Four Nine Nine. He had a, a large sale that ended money at all uh, Monday. It all did very well. And this was a very cool thing, and I hope you looked at it. This this was an assembled piece by Edward Farmer, and uh, if you don't know about Edward Farmer, he was a, uh, a, a business down in New York City back in the 20s and 30s, and he would buy. He was like Yamanaka Company in a way. When, they, when Yamanaka would take bits and pieces of jade and Chinese things and turn them into other things like, you know, desk ornaments and so forth. Or desk, this was an inkwell that was made and they used a, a Japanese, a Chinese jade uh, mutton fat uh, belt hook and then they, a cup, looks like they turned it upside down and then they fitted a nice, a nice red hard stone on here. Maybe, uh, I don't know what that is exactly. And uh, a, a jadeite, uh, reticulated carved jade finial and then mounted it with bronze. Um, here's an image of the bottom, Sterling Base, and uh, as you can see, marked Edward Farmer, New York. All right, his stuff is very collectible, highly collectible, um, sort of on a par with Yamanaka, same kind of thing. And this brought $2,247, okay? Now, interestingly, there was also this that was up, and it wasn't marked Edward Farmer, okay? But um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was done by him or by one of his spin-off. There were a couple of guys that worked for him, and they did work on the side. And this is very similar. This was somebody took some an enamel, Chinese enamels, and put a uh, cut Beijing, Beijing glass uh, lotus uh, uh, cup on it, made a made a little wine cup out of it. And this was a, a lot less money, two hundred ninety-three dollars. Okay, if it had said Edward Farmer on it, it probably would have brought fifteen hundred to two thousand. All right, but this 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 kind of retrofitting of Chinese objects was sort of a thing back in the 1920s and 30s uh, because they weren't worth an awful lot actually, you know. So a lot of the stuff was converted into desk sets, and yeah, I just wanted to get back to this. This was that uh, nice big pair of um, uh, 1830s, 40s Famille Rose uh, Mandarin vases that uh, Josh had up. These were big, as I recall, around 20 inches. And uh, they were up to, I think, $4,500 last week when we looked at them. And they closed at 8000 on the nose, okay? That's, that's what they were worth. They were qu quite a handsome pair. I'm not surprised. And uh, he also had this up. This was my favorite bowl that he had up. This was a very nice uh, uh, Jai Ching uh, period. It had a sort of a, a, a Ming Yao mark on the bottom, provincial mark on the bottom. But uh, very nicely decorated, beautiful enameling. Had a small chip right here on the rim, but nothing, nothing too significant. Something that could be easily fixed, no crack with it, and uh, had excellent, excellent decoration of immortals and so forth. In the in the famous, you know, the peddler with the cart and all that good business. There you go, and um, it did quite well. It brought twenty five hundred and fifty dollars, but it was a beautiful little bowl. Liked the bowl a lot. And, uh, and then uh, our friend Hans had this up, this nice uh, Famille Rose uh, figural landscape scene uh, vase, good big vase, 18, 20 inches tall, but v bright colors, very, very, very nice, uh, strong colors on it, uh, well shaped, and it was in beautiful condition, as I recall, had some restoration on a uh, hole in the bottom, it, somebody had lamped it at one point, this was a, must have been a gigantic table lamp or something, had some sort of restoration on the bottom can't see it. And it went for $720, which is a very reasonable price. I thought that was pretty good. There were
were a couple of bargains, though, that went through last week that were in the newsletter, and uh, we'll get to them, okay? And this was that, that nice little, um, uh, you know, red uh, uh, monochrome that we looked at, the bottle vase, 19th century, uh, had that uh, sort of nice foot. I talked about it a little last week, that way that foot is shaped, typical 19th century wear. And uh, it was, I think it was at about $20 or something in the video last week. $25 it was very, you know, a very low price. Well, it ended up doing pretty well. It brought $460, which is right about on the money um, for uh, a vase of this age, size, and so forth. Okay. And uh, this was another piece that went through last week. This was pretty cool. This is a 20th century carving of cor coral, but I love the fact that they that they they took the whole piece of coral, including the um, the, the 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 part that was you know embedded, the uncolored part. And the carver, the Chinese carver, worked from it. But the carving quality of this bird is excellent. It's probably an early to mid 20th century carving. It's not a terribly old one, but the craftsmanship, always look at the quality. The craftsmanship on this was really fine, just beautifully done. And uh, it did pretty well. It brought $1,864, all right? So sometimes you, if you're out looking around and you're in shops and places, you might come across a piece like this. And, and because it has all this, um, the old material attached to it still, sometimes dealers don't sell them for very much. They think they're, they're, they're not worth anything. Just a little tip. All right, and then on to this. This was that, uh, a, a rather nice uh, uh, early 20th century embroidery, but beautiful quality satiny, uh, uh, you know, uh, salmon-colored ground silk with these lovely rondelles and the nice... Um, uh, 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 nicely done, uh, you know, gilt thread border. Here's the uh, the wave pot. This is the same kind of decoration you see on aprons or skirts on robes, but the the piece it has good age to it. I think it's just been you know in a dark place, all folded up and well cared for, and it went for thirteen hundred and forty six dollars, which I think was a very good buy. I think that's a very nice piece of silk, and and I don't think it. Uh, um, uh, you know, it was a high price for that. I think that was a good buy. And last, this was a really good buy. This was that uh, 18th century, it was about, I don't know, seven or eight inch wide um, uh, patty, I think they call them patty pans or, or, or a teapot stand, but very nicely decorated in beautiful condition. Um, it had just a tiny bit of uh, uh, nibbles on the edges here and so forth, but nothing at all um, uh, distracting. It had a small nick on the rim, but this was a nice early one and in a pretty rare form. This is an unusual form, and uh, whoever got it got a steal. 97 bucks. okay? I'll say it again. Leave a bid. You know, uh, there, there are things on there that slip through, and they're um, extremely reasonable sometimes, okay? And now on to what's on the uh, newsletter for the rest of the week. And we haven't uploaded all the new stuff uh, that we found uh, yet. We're going to do that later on today. But there's a few things on here I want to get to them. One of them is that somebody, this seller, uh, when you, if you come to this seller on the newsletter page, click his other items because he's got a bunch of these 18th century uh, uh, Dutch and Netherlands and Northern European uh, export plates um, on here, 18th century uh, uh, early Qinlung, late Yongchen period. All right, this one's up to $33. It closes next Thursday. Well, this is Orlando Shores. Uh, we've had them on before. And this is a pretty nice thing. I, I like things like this. I think this is a very cool um, uh, 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 Kangxi uh, uh, piece with the reticulated walls. Uh, uh, the handles have a staple in it. The thing, it's, it's been used. I mean, this thing has had a life. But uh, as an example, it's pretty rare, okay? This is a pretty good thing. Um, it's had some uh, knocks about it, but old, old, those are old iron staple repairs. They've been in there a very long time. Somebody loved this thing. And uh, here's the underside with the biscuit. You can see how they, spl put the, they splined out the uh, staples to keep, to keep this thing uh, useful. And if you're a condition freak, this isn't for you. But if you love great aesthetic stuff, I, I like this uh, a lot. There was a staple here too, and they it must have fallen out. Sometimes they do fall out. But that's a good Kung Shi piece. And you see the same exact handle on uh, some of the most desirable uh, Kung Shi wine pots and teapots. Okay, it's, it's supposed to look like wrapped, you know, like it's been wrapped with straw. All right. And uh, right now it's only up to $28. So if you like funky, cool stuff, uh, that's a good one. All right. And also, we came across this. This is a really nice piece of Japanese uh, relief work and lacquer inlaid with mother of pearl. Lots of good gold lacquer on it. And it's fairly large, as I recall. Uh, this is a nice thing. Um, what size is it? 49 centimeters. 
So it's about a foot and a half, um, a foot and three quarter, about 18 inches wide or so. It's a nice big, nice big panel or tray. And uh, it's up to 99 cents. It's got one bid and three days to go, okay? 99 cents and three days to go, all right? If you like Japanese lacquer, this is, this is something you might look at because it doesn't appear to be getting a lot of interest. And then over to this, there's a very, this very nice piece of Chinese silk. It's a chair, it looks to be a chair cover, okay? But good color on that, all right? And uh, that's up to $1,125 so far, but it's a very nice one, beautiful color. And uh, this is that jade I mentioned at the beginning, uh, a rather nice piece of nephrite, early 20th century, probably done around 1910 to 1930, somewhere in there. But good quality carving, all right, and rather complicated carving, and I don't see any damage on it, all right. This is pretty good. This is a nice old one. It's got the, you, can, you, can, you can see where they rub the surface down. Nice condition. And it's only up to $53. It does have six days to go. But if you're a jade buyer, you might want to check that out, all right. And then onto this is you have this uh, uh, garlic neck mouth. It's not as nice as the one that's sold in Paris, obviously, but perfectly good one um, that's going to be on there with inscribed with uh, Mandarin figures. <clears throat> and then this, this is this is pretty cool. This is an early 20th century uh, vase, but a lot of relief work with dragons swirling in and out of the clouds. Fairly complicated. This is the bottom of it. It has a uh, Chin Lung mark. It's not Chin Lung, obviously, but it's, it is 19th century, all right? It's got one bid at $600, and it should bring maybe uh, another 500 or so. And then lastly is this. This is this uh, very nice, uh, uh, beautifully done Japanese plate, blue and white, early, early piece of Arita, uh, done around probably 1700 to 1730, all right? And that's up to uh, $61, which is very reasonable for that, okay? It's got a little nick on the rim, but a desirable form with this brown dressing, it's a good thing. All right, and that does it for the week. Thanks for watching. And if uh, you haven't subscribed yet to us on here on YouTube, please do. And if you don't get the weekly newsletter over at bitamount.com, come on over and you sign up. It's free. You can do it right here, okay? Have a great weekend, and um, uh, I'll talk to you all next week, all right? I'm doing a little, I'll be doing some traveling, and uh, I'll talk about that, too, while I'm doing it. Okay, have a good weekend, everybody. All right, bye-bye.